Welcome to worship at Faith United Methodist Church. On this fourth Sunday in Easter, our theme is The Lord is My Shepherd. So I invite you to gather several things together, something to drink, maybe something to eat, a lighted candle, our worry stone that has a heart on it, and then something new this week is this uh, plate that has a glass of water filled to the brim. So you want to have some kind of bowl underneath this glass because we are going to be spilling the water later in the worship service. And if you have a worry stone that has a heart on it that you really don't want to get wet, you could uh, get a replacement, another stone, a marble, whatever it is you have on hand that you could plunge into the water when the time comes. And then also, you might want to have a sheet with some hearts on it. This is especially for children. Every time the word heart or hearts is said during worship, color in one of the hearts. I'm glad to be here with you in worship today. We're going to center our hearts as we begin. So let's take a deep breath together, in through the nose, out through the mouth. I invite you to place your hand on your heart and let's use a slow heartbeat rhythm. And as we are conscious of this heartbeat, we pray. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, Help us to take this time to center on you, for you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step. Amen. Hear this assurance to you from God. Be still, O oh heart, you're not alone. Your heart is shared with me. Come now and come and center here. Your mind secure and free. Thanks be to God. Let's take another deep breath, making sure our shoulders and any tension we feel in our bodies is letting go with the breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's take another one. Let's pick up our heart stone, also called a worry stone, and let our touch on its surface Remind us that God's touch is within us, between us, and all around us. As close and real as this object is in our hand is how close and real God's love is for us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love as we offer a prayer song of letting go into your care we offer now our worries fears and strife we turn to you and know you're near your light our love and life i invite you now to place this heart worry stone next to the cross, where we remember that the brightness of the light of Christ shines far beyond the gloom of our worry. Thanks be to God. This worship service is offered as a way of breaking bread on a Sunday that we would normally have Holy Communion. Although we're sheltered in place and cannot 
gather at the Lord's table while physically separated from one another, we need not feel deprived of gathering at the table. So my table here at home is set with some tea and you might have uh, something to drink and something to eat. Uh, may these items bring comfort to us in this time of worship. When we break bread together, we remember the meals Jesus shared with others. Those meals were blessed because of Jesus' presence, no matter what the particular food or drink were. So in like manner, we celebrate Jesus' presence with us today. It is difficult in this moment not to be near some of the people we love and might be worried about. Take a moment to say out loud the names of people you wish were right there next to you at your table today. Speaking the names of our loved ones brings them firmly to mind. May we be comforted by their presence with us in this way. Blessings at the table are part of our Judeo-Christian heritage. Jesus asked us to remember him whenever we break bread and raise a cup in thanksgiving. This is why we call our communion prayers the great thanksgiving. In this feast of love and comfort, we can call to mind things for which we are deeply grateful. I invite you to speak aloud a couple of things for which you are grateful in this moment. Today we will speak of the pastures of well-being that Christ the shepherd desires for the flock. Let us give thanks for the well-being of being together through worship at the table. And so I invite you to touch the plate of food on your table or raise a glass of whatever you're drinking. And let us in this way say our blessing, repeating after me. Shepherding God, we gather in your name. Invited by Jesus, bound together with your spirit, in union with each other. Feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. Amen. So let us break bread and we will break open the word of scripture. You can go ahead and eat whenever you're ready. We continue here in our Easter season because Easter isn't just one day. It's a season of eight Sundays. We have an abundance of days to celebrate new life. The early church shared the abundance they had in this way. We read in Acts chapter 2 beginning at the 46th verse. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. We create a temple of worship in our hearts that, cement, that connects us across boundaries, distance, and time. As we share this worship, we will stay connected. And so, at the heart of the matter, we are connected through the spirit that we share in love. Because of that connection, I am as anxious to return to meeting together for worship as you are. But then we receive new declarations from both our governor and our bishop saying that we will be wise to wait. 
The governor has extended the stay at home order until May the 18th. And the bishop has directed us to continue to suspend worship until May the 31st. We also heard from our camps this week and they will not be able to offer camp this week, all camp, or this summer, all camping has been canceled. I expected to hear these things, like you probably did. And I'm happy to comply in order to keep our community safe. But as I sat at my computer and read the news, my eyes began to fill with tears. I really miss all that we used to share together. Marin C. Trabasi has written a blessing lament based on Psalm 84, the psalm that begins, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. So here is what she wrote. How lovely is your sanctuary, our sanctuary, O God. My soul longs for the pews or chairs, for the clear windows to the world around, or glass in sparkling color that tells the sweet old stories. My heart and my voice crack with tears because I miss the music of a choir and an organist. And yes, even my own tune in a bucket voice singing concealed by a crowd, for I'm not going to open my mouth and embarrass myself on Zoom, making a joyful noise to the living God. Even the smallest children find a second and holy home, even babies brought in arms for baptism. Happy are those who worship in your home and don't want to see the inside of mine. God, hear my whining prayer. Give ear, O God of the wilderness, who at least gave a design for a beautiful traveling tent. Accept my sadness, missing the place of memories and love. For I know that worship online and meetings too are precious in your sight. And I would rather be a distance keeper in the virtual house of God than reopen too soon and risk the health of even one of God's children. I know that God bestows a blessing on live stream and FaceTime, honor on YouTube and Zoom. No good thing does God withhold from those who worship digitally. But God of the temple in our hearts, we trust you with our lament, our discontent, our loss and our longing to be glad when we hear them say, let us go to the house of the Lord. Your staff at the church is already talking about what will be needed when the time of reopening begins. It's not as simple as it might seem. Reopening when it is okayed will be on a gradual basis. We would likely start with small group meetings and more regular staff hours and build up to worship services with lots of cleaning and disinfecting along the way. We will probably need to spread ourselves out in the sanctuary using every other row and keeping space between family units. We might even begin with a drive-in worship service, which would definitely keep us a safe distance from each other. We have received from the annual conference and other sources a guide for how to proceed when the time arrives. Details will be shared with you once we have a plan in place and the order is given to proceed. During our time at home, you may have turned to Psalm 23 for comfort. In this, one of the most well-known passages of scripture, we celebrate God's care for us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. 
leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Inspired by Psalm 23, Father Michael Jonkus, composer of On Eagle's Wings, has written a new hymn. He introduces the hymn this way. These are difficult times for all of us, individually and globally. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted life as normal and called for acts of corporate and individual heroism in the face of present suffering and an uncertain future. People of faith may be struggling to articulate their belief in an all good and all powerful God in this new era. Shelter Me is my attempt as a church composer to find God's presence even in these fraught times. Based on the beloved Psalm 23, my paraphrase adapts the psalmist sentiments to respond to our present anxieties. Those who wish may download the score free of charge and may freely reproduce it for your worshiping communities until the end of March 2021. May God sustain us with mercy and compassion as we travel through the valley of the shadow of death to the banquet of eternal life. Signed, Mike Jonkus, 27th of March, 2020. Now let's listen to this beautiful new hymn. It's three verses, each followed by a refrain. I've printed the refrain and I'll hold it up if you'd like to sing along. So I'll get the music here and I'm gonna cue up uh, the music for us. Shepherd and sheep, my God and I, to fresh green fields you led my steps in days gone by. Shelter me, all will be well in 
Jesus used the metaphor of a shepherd several times in his ministry. In the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, the sheep know that the shepherd really cares about them and offers what they need, good, abundant, green pastures to eat in. They recognize the shepherd who takes care of them as they hear his voice. This is what Jesus said. I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again. I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. There are so many ways to live life to the fullest right now, or as another translation of the scripture calls it, living life abundantly. Being together, either physically or virtually, is one important way for us in this moment. Perhaps we will keep up some of our connection habits we have developed well beyond our time of isolation. Through scripture, we see the desire of God for us to be taken care of, for us to live to the fullest, and for us to support one another in having abundant life, in community, food, and gladness. The thief could be anything that robs us of those things. Sometimes the sacrifices we have endured because of our attempts to slow this virus and feel as if we've been robbed of our well-being. But we can also turn that around and see that these sacrifices are how we share goodwill and well-being with one another. This is how we love our neighbors. Our heart overflows with the grace and guidance we know from the shepherd, and we want that goodness for everyone. Glad and generous hearts overflow with love in so many ways. I'm trying to sort through accumulated papers during this time at home. I have saved a lot of schoolwork, uh, letters, and memorabilia over my lifetime. Recently, I came across my confirmation certificate. And to my amazement, today, May the 3rd, is the anniversary of my confirmation. Confirmation was one way that God's love overflowed for me. You see, I've always been a person of many questions, trying to dig deeply for meaning and purpose. I loved being in confirmation class because we got to ask a lot of questions as we explored our faith. We discussed God, the nature of Jesus, the purpose of the church, and the state of humanity, all very interesting topics. But when it came time to be confirmed and become a full-fledged member of the church, I wasn't sure that was for me. I still had a lot of questions. I had quarrels with the church and with some people in the church. Why would I want to join? What then ensued was a series of in-depth discussions with my pastor, who was also my dad. He did not deny me my struggles or shy away from the importance of my questions. He assured me that no one joins the church with everything about their faith figured out. He was clear that confirmation is one milestone along a person's spiritual journey, 
not the end of it, or even a point of certainty in faith. It is a commitment to continuing along the path and listening to Jesus. Well, that I could do. So 50 years ago today, I took the vows of confirmation and church membership. It's been a wonderful journey, full of surprises and deep meaning. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. So let's do something to illustrate the abundance of God's love for us. Let's celebrate the care our Good Shepherd endlessly extends to us. This glass of water filled to the brim symbolizes the state of grace and love that is always and already what God gives to us. Today we'll place our worry stone or its substitute. I'm going to use a substitute because I don't think this sticker will do well in the water. Uh, we're going to place it into this full glass of water. When we drop our worry and grief into it, we will see the love spill over. So do that right now. Placing our feelings and trust into God's love helps us to pour out love all around us, making that love available to everyone. There is more than enough to go around. In this week's scripture, Jesus talked about listening to the shepherd, not to the things that rob us of our well-being. So I ask you a couple of questions. One, who or what have you found to be a voice of the shepherd giving you a sense of well-being and abundance in this time? And secondly, what things are thieves threatening to rob you of a sense of calm and trust? Or if you can't think of something from this week for either of those two questions, what do you have in your memory as something that offers abundance or something that is a thief who robs you of calm and trust. So let's complete this sentence about abundance. I see abundance in blank, or I see abundance when blank, or I see abundance where blank. I see abundance in, when, or where. You could also journal your answer and share with someone later in the day. Let's take just a moment for you to think about it. I see abundance. As we move now into a time of prayer, let us remember all of those in need today, including ourselves. So let us pray. Dear Shepherd God, we pray for those who have lost loved ones, for those who are sick and recovering, for those who are caring for loved ones who are sick at home, for those who are caring for persons in medical care, for those who are separated from loved ones, for those who are feeling alone and isolated, for those who are helping and are so very tired, for those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort, for those who are afraid. Oh God, we gather all these prayers into one as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. about let's sing that new song we've been learning shelter me one more time I think we're gonna cue it up here it's got such a lovely and simple melody Shelter me, oh, shelter me, all will be well. 
it is time to praise God with an energetic affirmation, repeating after me. We know Jesus is among us. Even in this very home, we will not let fear be louder than love. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls, we will sing God's praise. For we are Easter people. Amen. Easter people, I invite you to support ministry to neighbors near and far. Look for the online giving button in the upper right-hand corner of our homepage, www.faithumchurch.com. God bless you as you give. As an offertory of sorts, let me share the 23rd Psalm as rendered by Steve Garnis Holmes in Unfolding Light. Beloved, you shepherd me gently. You free me from desires. You bid me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside calm waters. You revive the breath within my breath. You guide me in the paths of harmony for the sake of your delight. Oh, though I walk through deepest canyons shadowed by death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your shepherd's staff, your steady hand, they comfort me. In the face of what I fear, you provide a feast for me. Your blessing is a long, warm shower. My plate is full. Surely goodness and mercy will companion me all my days, and I will dwell in your intimate presence every moment of my life. Before the benediction, let me give a shout out to Dr. Marsha McPhee of WorshipDesignStudio.com, who created this liturgy and has allowed me to adapt it. My friends, as we close this time together, remember, God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you, always filling your cup to overflowing, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know it is, it is as true and holy as any feeling, including joy and hope and love. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. Amen.